Anyone who wants to be first must make himself last of all. If one looks around, one sees symptoms of secret ambition. It can be as simple as wanting to be noticed when one is in church. There are quite a few people out there who insist on being heard in the assembly. They are incapable of praying at the same speed as the others, thus allowing others to notice them. They are inclined to say the parts that belong to someone else, notably to the celebrant, thereby committing several sins in one go. They are eager to be seen in the sanctuary area. They are eager to do what belongs to the consecrated and to have their hands touching what normally in church history was reserved to consecrated hands. They know a lot and they must be heard in conversation and they have authority not short of that of the Holy Father for they pontificate. This can creep through the whole life of the Church. There are those who satisfy their ambition and work their way up and then exercise authority in a way which is in disharmony with the fundamental law of charity. What we refer to as ecclesiastical bullying. Council Fathers were aware of that issue and tried their best to address it in certain key council documents, wanting that reverence and respect be the keynotes when it comes to handling souls and exercising the ministry of authority. For one does not exercise authority as a tyrant, but as a minister, wanting the good of souls and guiding them to green pastures. It can be also in prayer groups. The itch to dominate is out there. But it can also be at home. There are not a few wives who are in practice the head of the family. In the traditional Christian order of things, which has its roots even in the Old Testament, the authority of God the Father is exercised in the paternal authority of the head of the family, who has power to bless the table and the children, and who has the last word. But alas, many Christian fathers are weak, and the wife then has to take over. But the order of creation is not so. We need strong fathers of families. Moreover, it can happen also between friends. There can be a tendency to invade, to over-talk 
is not to realize that one is invasive. There seem to be very few who know when they have said enough. There are some who cannot bear silence. There are not a few who, when somebody is about to answer, raise their voice and go to the next point, excluding therefore any interference. Are they in the last place or wanting to be first? Words are like leaves and where they most abound much depth of sense beneath is seldom.